light of the world You step down into darkness Opened my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down Here I am to say that you're my God You're all together lovely, all together worthy All together wonderful to me King of all days, oh so highly exalted in heaven above Humbly you came to the earth you created All for love's sake became poor Here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that you're my Together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Okay. Dear friends. Today, let us discuss the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Holy Eucharist is a supreme expression of Christ's love for each one of us. It is a reenactment of Christ's sacrifice on the cross in an unbloody manner. At the Last Supper, Jesus instituted the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Jesus gave his own, his own body and blood to humanity in anticipation of his death so that sharing his body and blood we may enter into deep communion with Christ and also share the salvation that he earned by shedding his blood on the cross. Jesus asked his disciples to do this in memory of him. When celebrating the Holy Eucharist, we recall to our mind the passion, death and resurrection of Christ. Thus, when we break the bread and offer the chalice, the same thing takes place today that happened then. Christ truly gives himself for us and we truly gain a share in him. The unique and unrepeatable sacrifice on Christ made present on the altar. Holy Eucharist is also known the Lord's Supper. Every celebration of Holy Eucharist is the same Lord's Supper that Christ celebrated along with his disciples at the supper time. It is also the anticipation or the banquet that the Lord will celebrate along with all the redeemed at the end of time. Another traditional name for the holy sacrifice is the breaking of the bread. It is an old Jewish ritual during the meal. At the Last Supper, Christ gave a new meaning for this ritual by associating it with his self-offering for humanity. The disciples recognized the risen Lord at the breaking of the bread. Their hearts and eyes were open and recognized the ever-abiding presence of the Eucharistic Lord with them. Holy sacrifice is also called Holy Communion by which we receive the body of Christ and increasingly transformed into the body of Christ and 
united with one another. Eucharistic devotion is at the heart of the church's spirituality. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI says, Without the Eucharist, the church simply does not exist. He adds further, In the Eucharist, the Son of God comes to meet us and desires to become one with us. Eucharistic adoration is simply the natural consequence of the Eucharistic celebration, which itself is a supreme act of adoration. Therefore, not only on Sundays and days of obligation, whenever possible, a follower of Christ should have a passionate desire to partake in the Holy Eucharist and making it a point to visit the Blessed Sacrament who awaits his beloveds. Our active participation in the Holy Eucharist leads us to enter into deep communion with Christ. The presence of Christ in our lives would transform us and in return we transform the world. The Second Vatican Council considers Eucharistic celebration as the source and summit of Christian life. Our regular participation in the Holy Eucharist would help us to live in a constant union with God. Thus, we become a Eucharistic presence that carries Jesus to the heart of the world. Hello again. I hope you had a wonderful week. But now, once again, it's time to learn about a new saint. So welcome back to Let's Saint a Story. Here we are at the gates of heaven. So if you recall, right here we have Saint Romero. Here we have Saint Francis of Assisi. Here we have Saint Therese of Lisieux. Right at the center, we have St. John Bosco. Here we have St. Padre Pio. Here we have St. Augustine of Hippo. Here is St. Ignatius of Loyola. And towards the extreme right, we have St. Teresa of Calcutta. If you are not able to recall the stories of any of these saints, you can always go back and watch the videos to learn about the stories again. It is always good to be prepared and know the stories of each of these saints so that you can better relate the stories of the saints that you learn in the future and if you were to tell the story to someone else you can always recall and it could be at the tips of your fingers so once again if you do not recall these stories you can always go back and see the videos again to learn about the saint once again. So, coming to today, if you were able to figure out the saint in that activity called Who is that saint last week? Congratulations! If you weren't able to figure out who the saint is for this week, then you can learn about the saint today. So, let's go ahead and let's meet the saint. So, once again, let me reiterate. Imagine you're meeting the saint at a hotel or a nearby park. So you want to make a new friend. You want to get to know the saint. So you ask a few questions. The saint replies. Thus you make a friend because you learn more about the saint and you know the saint on a more personal level. So you make a friend. So let's begin our conversation with the saint. Casual encounter. This is the person you see in front of you. He is a small boy. He doesn't seem as old as the saints in the previous pictures or the previous encounters. So, there's something very special about this person. He's young, vibrant, youthful. So, let's learn more about him. So, you start off by saying, Hey, it's so nice to meet you. May I know your name? To which the saint replies, Hello, 
My name is Dominic Savio, but you can call me Savio if you want. Tell me about your childhood, Savio. Well, I was born on the 2nd of April 1842 in Chieri, Italy to Carlo and Brigitta Savio. My family was very devout and pious. My parents had 10 children. My father was a blacksmith and my mother was a seamstress. Even as a small child, I used to say grace before every meal and I refused to eat with those who did not. I always used to encourage others to pray. I used to visit church regularly. Even if the church was closed, I used to kneel and pray outside, be it in the snow or mud. In school, I was recognized as an exceptional student who studied hard and performed well. I became an altar server. I attended daily mass and went for confessions regularly. I received my first Holy Communion at the age of seven. That day was the happiest day of my life. On the day I received my first Holy Communion, I wrote four promises in the book. Those promises were, I will go to confessions often and as frequently to Holy Communion as my confessor allows. I wish to sanctify the Sundays and festivals in a special manner. My friends shall be Jesus and Mary, death rather than sin. That's quite interesting, Savio. Tell me more. Well, in October 1854, I was personally introduced to St. John Bosco. I told St. Bosco that I wanted to become a priest. I studied directly under St. Bosco. I worked diligently to always ask questions if I didn't understand something. But around the same time, my health began to fail. My doctor asked me to be sent home to recover. After four days at home, my health condition worsened. My last words were, Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye. Oh, what wonderful things I see. I fell asleep and died within minutes on March 9th, 1857. I was 14 years old at the time. I'm really sorry to hear that, Savio. What happened after that? St. Bosco was actually powerfully touched by my life. He wrote a biography titled The Life of Dominic Savio. As people started to learn about me, he started calling out for my canonization. I was declared venerable in 1933 by Pope Pius XI. I was beatified in 1950, then canonized in 1954 by Pope Pius XII. I became the patron saint of choir boys, the falsely accused, and juvenile delinquents. What can I do to be more like you, Savio? All you need to do is just pray daily, attend masses regularly, and confess your sins as often as possible. Spirituality and holiness lie in the simple things you do. Just keep God, Jesus, and Mary at the center of your lives and everything else will fall rightly in place. Do good to others and live a charitable life. Have fun but be diligent at the same time. It was really great meeting you, Savio. It was great meeting you too. Keep praying for me and pray to me. I too will be praying for you from up above. Before I leave, I would like to leave you with this quote. Nothing seems tiresome or painful when you are working for a master who pays well, who rewards even a cup of cold water given for love of him. Good going! You made a friend in St. Dominic Savio, someone of a similar age, it's easier to relate to and you know how Dominic Savio has lived his life. So once again, it's what you learn that counts. Being of a similar age, you've learned what Savio has done in his life. His daily prayers, his uh, decision to visit the church on a daily basis, 
his dedication to God and his teachings, his promises. If you can follow these little personality traits or these little habits and if you can inculcate them into your own lives, you too can become a saint just like Dominic Savio. So that brings us back to the gates of heaven. So we have an ensemble of saints and they are joined by Dominic Savio, who we made a friend with today. So this brings us to who is that saint? Towards the left, we have a silhouette of a saint and towards the right, we have a clue related to that silhouette. So clapping the silhouette on the left and the clue to the right, if you can figure out who the saint is, type the answer in the comment section below. The clue reads out, Documentation of Eucharistic Miracles on the website. Died due to leukemia. So if you know the saint, go ahead, type the answer right now. So, thank you and saint in your life.